<laughs> it's it you go through ups and downs but we um and i'm again really lucky with the people that are in the team like they raise their hand when things aren't going well or when yeah. we know you know we need a we need a team engagement let's yeah. get together let's and do this. Yeah. <laughs> on station and we are here with anel von von Finkenstein. i've been practicing in my head to say the Finkenstein properly so i hope i landed it well she is an admitted legal practitioner of the high court of namibia and f and b fiduciary which falls under the first rand group in namibia now she completed her articles of clerkship with coop and partner and was admitted as a legal practitioner in the high court of namibia by august of 2017 and she also obtained her llb degree at the university of stellenbosch in 2015 and during her course of studies that's when she was also invited to join the golden key international honor society for academic achievement and did you know that she's actually fluent in German, English, and she's conversational in Afrikaans and in French. The only thing I know in, in French is parlez-vous français? And I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do not parlez-vous. I do not whatsoever. And I welcome to, 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 to the show. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I, I, I really want to get to the part where you became so, so fluent. But before we get there, let's get to know the person that is you. Tell us a little bit about your, your upbringing. So, yeah, born and raised in Vintuk. Um, and I think, <laughs> yeah, it's it's difficult to condense upbringing into like a really short bit yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, born and raised in Vintuk. I grew up in a really um, liberal, outspoken household. Mm. You know, my dad was involved in local politics and he was a doctor. So we always had lots of people around the house. Mm. Um, and we always had really fun yeah, fun <laughs> arguments, discussions, <laughs> um, a lot of, you know, like social justice kind of things. And yeah. um, I think, yeah, it, it really formed me a lot uh, as a person. And yeah, I was really, yeah, lucky in my upbringing as well. Close yeah. with my family. Mm -hmm. um, we were always so many kids. Like, it, it's just my brother and I, oh. but there were always many, many more Cousins children around. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not just friends. Friends. All friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Always chilled. <laughs> and when it comes to, you know, the, the, the family dynamics, like what you said, there was a lot of debate. In, 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 in the home. Um, did that spark any sort of curiosity for you? Definitely, no. So I was always really interested in, you know, like history and then social justice mm. sort of as a theme. Mm. And I think I always thought I would go and study history and languages because that was very much, you know, where what I was good at in mm. school. Um, and then I was, yeah, I, I was lucky enough to be encouraged <laughs> <laughs> to, to study law. And um, no, it really, it sparked a huge passion of mine. Mm. So it's, it's, I think, studying law in uh, Namibia and South Africa, yeah. we are so we are so privileged actually that we're able to study that now mm -hmm. because we have a history of oppression, right? Mm -hmm. And the legal system and the laws were used in mm -hmm. that space. Mm -hmm. And the course that I was on, I believe in, in Namibia as well, there's, there's a lot of focus on kind of going through the history of it, the restorative mm -hmm. justice, mm -hmm. kind of the positive impact the law can have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that oh, I loved studying law. It was, <laughs> it was yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Can I just admit, you're actually the first person who I have met who lights up talking about law. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't this, and I'm sure it was, of course it was difficult. Oh yeah. But then, <laughs> but the delight of, on your face when you speak about this, it's, 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 it's really a pleasure to, to really see. Let's talk about those university years. I know you think you might seem it was eons ago, but it was just now now. It was just now. Just <laughs> now now. <laughs> what was your experience like at Stellenbosch? Because we we're even talking about you being part of the editorial board. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so with the response of Meridiana, so it does feel like eons ago. <laughs> but uh, I do want to highlight, like, it was a it was a um, paper for run by law students for law students, right? So we were I publishing see. the the dissertations that the final years would do, oh. and if anybody else had any interesting. So, it's it's something a bit different to other legal academia because you know it's like oh. what's it published or perish in the academic circles. Yeah. And this just gives an in to students already. It's, okay. It's, yeah. So that was that was really mm -hmm. cool, um, and it's man the law is an intimidating thing like please hear me it's really hard to study I'm, I'm not gonna lie um, you will find areas that you enjoy that come easily to you where things just click mm. and you'll find areas where you like just make it through like, <laughs> let me just get that 70, 60 just yeah 50 is a pass <laughs> <laughs> no so for, so for some of the subjects yeah. um, you just be yeah. realistic about it but it uh, it prepares you so much and I was I was chatting to someone the other day um, about how I think 
if you have the opportunity to study and you don't know what to study, law is a fantastic thing because it takes away quite a lot of fear of real life because when you go into like after you study mm. there's lease agreements you might be starting a business there's documents you need to sign if you take a loan at the bank there's all this legalese and you have no idea what it means yeah. and I think if you either have someone who can explain it to you or you've actually studied it it takes away quite a bit of fear around mm. the real world not that you know it'll still be there but mm. at least you'll understand what it means mm. um and I'm really yeah really passionate about that and I had such a um through, sorry, this is now not really about university, but it sort of is. It's about a student in Namibia. Of course. <laughs> um, but with that, it's it's so cool to see. So I was with the Responsa Meridiana in Stellenbosch, which is really far away from Namibia, where, you know, where my passion lies and where I've made, you know, the decision to stay here and really do something, mm. um, if that makes sense. And I was so fortunate to be part of a program called Upshift Namibia, mm. um, where you kind of get a mentor and mentee relationship. And um, the mentee I was um, paired with, she started and or she's still at university. I think she's like third year. Mm. And she's um, just started this program and was successful in the program we were at and got a grant about legal literacy in the rural areas. So wow. because coming from a place where people didn't know basic rights, consent, yes. things like that. And it was so, yeah, it's, it's nice to see that the fire is still there yeah. even when sometimes once you like start a job and you're in the grind and things are happening you kind of lose a bit of that I love 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 that I, I mean even for me not even just outside of the rural areas for me for myself like what you're saying it's so the law is so intimidating yeah. all of those terms and conditions and the clauses and the sub clauses um, so a cause that, or, like that and to be a part of it uh, it must have been quite an experience we're still with our royal hustler this morning we're just gonna skip on over to Chloe and Haley saying to it Now, Internet FM, we're still chatting to our royal hustler, Anel von Finkenstein, who is a admitted legal practitioner of the High Court of Namibia and at FNB Fiduciary Namibia. Let's let's get to um, FNB. How did you actually, um, before we get to your role, how did you end up at at FNB in that in that role? Um, so I was in private practice. So I was a lawyer, you know, divorces, maintenance, custody, that kind of thing. And um, I was looking for a bit of a different challenge. And I'd realized I'd really like to go into a bigger corporate um, kind of area and um, had a fantastic interview with people who seemed really like-minded yeah. and um, yeah, then, then yeah, I was there. Your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as the department head, how has that experience been like for you? What are you your, with your key responsibilities and especially your goals in this role? So the role sort of comprises of two parts. Mm. The one is obviously, you know, sort of strategic day-to-day -day reporting, lots of papers and invites and emails mm. and meetings. Um, but the other part is really leading a team and then providing technical support yeah. um, to that team, right? And and emotional support is maybe not the right thing, but we are there for each other. Yeah. Um, so fiduciary deals with um, last wills and testaments, trusts and estates. Mm. So we really help people prepare um, sort of and, and give them control over what happens if they mm. pass away and then we help the families through that should that mm. then happen and um, it is a quite a challenging area to be in because you are helping people through a really difficult time of course. and um, yeah leading I have a I'm very lucky I my team is amazing um, and it, highly empathetic people mm. um, but we were yeah we were just chatting in the break just now about how you really need to be quite you know your mental health needs to be there yeah. and we um, do try and focus on that we have a great yeah I, I'd like to think we have really good support mm. um, but yeah key responsibilities is really leading mm. making sure people are in their happy spaces because you can really only perform if you're in the right place of course um, but it is quite a unique area I was just as we were talking one of my colleagues she's been with us for 10 years mm. and a few like a week before her 10 year anniversary at work as you celebrate these things and you get like a certificate and everything but uh, she was it was the end of the day it was just the two of us left in the office and she was like I love my job. <laughs> so I was just like, what do you mean? She's like, no, just like, it's obviously these difficult times and yeah. all of that, but some days like everything balances, <laughs> you know, the clients, you you close an estate and usually that's quite cathartic for the person. Yes. Um, so yeah, it really is there. And having recently been on the other side of the table as well, mm. like I, I lost family members mm. and then the estate was administered in within the team because mm. we had the walls there. And um, 
it it is different you don't know until you're on the other side of the table how much goes into that Mm -hmm. and um yeah it's we it's it is specialized and you kind of you have a calling for it you have Um, to you have to um, because no one really wants to think about it and now that it's already happened there are some that are not even prepared for it so i I, it goes back to yes you know emotional support system but how do you keep that team morale would you say so it's hard. Um, I won't lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it. You go through ups and downs, but we um, and I'm again really lucky with the people that are in the team. Like they raise their hand when things aren't going well, or when yeah. we know. You know, we need a we need a team engagement. Let's yeah. get together Let's and do chat. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we we do quite a bit of that, and mm-hmm. then sort of the day to day, you mm-hmm. check in on people, mm-hmm. you see how they're doing. Yeah. But as Anel, as the person, what do you do to keep sane? Um, what are some of your interests outside of work? So. So I, so I love my family, um, mm. you know, my husband, my dogs is, is yeah. sort of my happy space, yeah. but I also love traveling. Mm. It's, you know, as far and as close as I can, you know, whether you get on a plane and yeah. you go somewhere, whether mm. you get in the car and you go camping, mm. like just getting out is, is really what keeps me sane. And I love um, fantasy books specifically. Ooh. Like I, I have recently learned um, your inner child is really important. Yes. And I used to read a lot of fantasy growing up. Uh. And then I was like, no, I need to read serious books. Yeah. Self development <laughs> things. As a person now, you're an adult, we're adulting. And recently I just got back into it, and it's it's just like sparked again, and I'm very happy. Who are you enjoying now? Um, so Rebecca Yaros, mm. um, The Fourth Wing, it's like a whole book talk sensation. Okay. That was really fun. Yeah. Um, I'm reading uh, Children of Blood and Bone. I just finished. Um, wow, which that's, is, that's, that's an intense one, them. <laughs> it is, it is. The name sounds very intense, but it's actually a... Um, so African American writer, uh-huh. and you don't get a lot of African like, American authors, mm. especially in fantasy, mm. not so many. Mm-hmm. So it was so nice to read that. Like mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, probably for the first time, mm. and it was so yeah, very different and really beautiful. Okay, Just beautiful writing. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll put it on my list. Thank you for putting me on. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, what is some some of the advice that you like to leave us with? So um, I'm going to plagiarize our FNB CEO because um, it's just it's it's three words that I try and keep in mind. Um, so he he said this thing about like passion, pride, precision, mm. and it really is like find the thing that you're passionate about, take pride in your work, and you know um, be precise about it as well. And what I also want to leave people with, and uh, you know when you get questions before an interview and you like overthink it completely. Yeah. What am I gonna say? <laughs> but what I do want to just say is sometimes so. Some people are very lucky and their job is their calling and their passion and that's what they do. If that isn't for you, it's fine. Like find something else that fulfills you as well. Just still take pride in what you do day to day because in the end, it is the thing that enables you to to live a life. So um, I think that's something that that really... And have a good circle of friends that actually support you but also are honest with you when you need it. Oh, no, of course. (laughs) And and that comes part and parcel of of, of, of the job title of my friends. I always say that it's my responsibility to be absolutely honest with you. Otherwise, why why, why am I here? Yeah, you know. even when you don't want to hear it. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anel, for coming. We really appreciate you. Cool. Thanks. And that was our royal hustler from this morning, coming from the F and B fiduciary, which is uh, a part of the uh, the umbrella of the first Rand Group Namibia. That was Anel von Finkenstein, who has plagiarized her CEO, living by the CEO's motto. She says, "Passion." pride and precision and please whatever you do take pride in what you do that was 99 fm's royal hustlers proudly brought to you by numdeb diamond corporation good today better tomorrow